Power Broker has always been a mysterious figure, and not just in the Marvel Cinematic Universe where fans of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier series spend some time trying to decipher the Power Broker's true identity. Even now, some people still do not believe to this day that the reveal is even the true one, and there are still some out there that theorize there could still be a Power Broker working behind Sharon Carter and simply using her as a front for their true identity. In the comics, Power Broker has always been a villain shrouded in mystery, and even today we still do not know the true identity of the modern day Power Broker from the comics. Initially, Power Broker was Curtis Jackson, but even before his death in 2012, there had been a new Power Broker that was introduced on the scene, making their first appearance in Avengers The Initiative Annual in 2008. Their identity still remains unknown, I believe. It's been more than 10 years and we're still not sure exactly who that is. The more modern version of Power Broker even still hasn't been seen since 2023. What are some villains that you haven't seen for some time that you would like to see come back? Definitely one of the weirdest weirdos out there for me is this next villain we're about to talk about. Even his name just sounds so cosmically weird and fantastic. Zemnu. Now Zemnu might not be a full on Avengers team villain, but he is a villain of one of the mainstay Avengers, the Hulk. He was an alien cyborg prisoner who escaped from exile only to crash land on Earth. Zemnu initially hoped to control the minds of the people of Earth and get them to build him a new spaceship. Now the problem with this new spaceship is that it would be so powerful that its launch would in essence destroy the Earth. I'll tell you what, that's definitely a cosmic criminal right there. Zemnu is a psionic being who can hypnotize his victims and control their minds. He can also use hosts to heal himself, in essence transforming their body into his until there is simply nothing resembling them or their mind left. Even stranger, Zemnu was technically the first character to be known as the Hulk before the creation of the Bruce Banner turned green giant version of that character. Well, Zemnu was recently brought back during the often praised Immortal Hulk run. Since he was dealt with there, he has only made a few more appearances. And mysterious too, since during Immortal Hulk, I believe he was permanently defeated there. We haven't seen Zemnu since his brief appearance, though, in the Infinity comic X Men Unlimited, which can exclusively be read digitally on the Marvel Unlimited app. Zemnu, anyways, last appeared there in 2022. Honestly, one of the deeper cuts on our list is this next one Space Phantom, or Space Phantoms, sometimes. Initially believed to be the name of the character, we would later learn through various retcons that Space Phantom was more of a title or like a label than a true individual character name. Space Phantom is known for being a sower of chaos. Initially in the comics, Space Phantom made their first appearance in Avengers issue number two, where they attempted to invade Earth by nullifying the Avengers team, shapeshifting into various characters in order to sow discord between the Avengers. Space Phantom initially claimed to be from space and claimed they were just kind of scouting ahead to get ready for an alien invasion that was behind them. And while this at some point might have been true, it's now believed that Space Phantoms actually hail from temporal limbo. Not Magic's limbo, but instead Immortus's realm, which exists outside of time. But while in limbo, they were basically warped during their stay there. They have also been used as agents of Immortus, the Kang variant, in the past as such. The Red Ghost started out as a Fantastic Four villain. He is a Russian communist who was known for his mad science. He studied and sought to recreate the mutating effects of the cosmic rays, which were responsible for giving the Fantastic Four their powers, of course. Ivan Kragoth built a ceramic ship that went up into space with a team of apes. He and his apes gained powers. Ivan himself gave him the power to appear intangible, hence his name as the Red Ghost. And he became a leader of these super apes. Later on, he would team up with the Mole Man and end up fighting against the Avengers while they attempted to rescue their kidnapped teammate, Giant Man, from Mole Man's clutches. He was also thwarted by the Avengers later on when he attempted to rob a bank with his team of super apes. Red Ghost also made his most recent appearance in an Avengers comic, I believe, although not the main title, not the main Avengers team. Instead, he appeared back in 2021 in Savage Avengers, written by Jerry Dugan. Baron Zemo is one of my favorite villains when it comes to any and all that he opposes, but I think I especially love him as an Avengers villain, to be honest with you. Zemo, while certainly dangerous on his own, is also well known for leading his own popular villain group, the Masters of Evil. Not only is this group formidable as rivals to the Avengers, but they also at one point attempted to defeat the Avengers by, get this, 
replacing them. Yeah, this was when Baron Zemo came up with the plan to basically disguise the team of villains and rebrand them as a hero group, attempting to beat the Avengers at literally their own game. Enter the Thunderbolts. The initial Thunderbolts team, that is. It wouldn't be revealed until after this team had made a name for themselves both in canon and in comics who they truly were, and it was quite the impressive twist. When it comes to Zemo's recent appearances, he hasn't really been around much lately. We haven't seen him in the comics since he was most relevant as well in the MCU in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. He last appeared in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier miniseries in the comics, which came out, like I said, around the time of the Disney Plus streaming series, so kind of in line with that. And Zemo was also, of course, featured in the Disney Plus series. We haven't seen him in the MCU or in the comics, I believe, since then, really, although some folks are likely still hopeful in regards to the MCU version of Zemo that he'll be making some kind of appearance in Thunderbolts, I'm sure, but I'm still not sure if that's gonna happen. Annihilus is a weird but iconic villain. He hails from the Negative Zone and is also insectoid in his appearance. Annihilus basically has a cosmic magic wand that we know as the Cosmic Control Rod that he uses in his attempt to take over the Negative Zone. In more recent appearances, however, Annihilus chose to wear this rod as a sort of protective accessory, using it to protect himself against naturally occurring dangers such as aging, heat, and cold in addition to gaining the ability to fly through space. He also initially became a villain of the Fantastic Four because they borrowed his cosmic rod to help treat the Invisible Woman during her pregnancy, which of course bothered Annihilus greatly, even though to be fair, they did actually return it. So While Annihilation is probably one of the most well known events and stories involving Annihilus, he has actually been seen since then being used by Jonathan Hickman in his Avengers run and also being used to fight against the Cancerverse in Annihilation Scourge. But that was back in 2019, so it's been a while since we've seen him in the spotlight as either a villain or a reluctant ally. It's kind of unfortunate what happened to the Chaos King. He actually seemed like a pretty neat villain in theory. The event that he is primarily known for is the Chaos War. Unfortunately, Chaos War took place right before the epic Fear Itself event in terms of Marvel's chronological print history and of course became overshadowed by that. Ultimately, it also felt less planned out, I would say. The Chaos King, also known as Amatsu Mikaboshi, is a cosmic entity and basically Japanese god who met his end during the events of Chaos War, where he was defeated. During Chaos War, the Chaos King used his power to reverse life and death, meaning the dead heroes came back to life while those who had been alive were now deceased instead. As a Japanese kami, he has godlike powers, making him insanely durable and strong while also having supernatural abilities as well. The Chaos King's powers were more dark in their origin though when it came to their magic type. As cool of a character as the Chaos King was, however, we haven't really seen him since the primary event he was featured in, Chaos War. Honestly, I'd be down to see him come back. It's been like a really long time. You can make him a mastermind of something and people probably wouldn't even be expecting to see him because it's been so long. The Triune Understanding was an organization led by Jonathan Tremont. It was originally believed to be an organization focused on maximizing human potential, although it was later revealed to have, um, well, more villainous motives, of course. Tremont specifically used this organization and its resources to create a smear campaign to be used against the Avengers, to basically discredit them. He claimed the Avengers were intolerant of various religions and races and just tried to ruin their image completely. He also used his villainous brothers, Lord Templar and Pagan, in an attack specifically against the Avengers, which he then actually used to blame the superhero team for all the destruction that the fight had caused. What's truly wild is although this organization is not one of the most well-known Avengers enemies and they haven't been featured recently, the Triune understanding still succeeded in getting both Thor and Captain America to leave the team for a bit. Surprisingly, despite their successes, however, we haven't really seen them for, I think, over 20 years in the comics. They just kind of faded away. Honestly, we should bring them back. They're pretty cool. That's about it. I'm your host, Amanda McKnight. Until next time, you stay nerdy, YouTube.